Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Motivation sometimes comes from a strange place. I, 29 male, was with a girl, 30 female, for a year and a half. She fell head over heels for me. Oh, I wasn't even looking for any kind of relationship. I approached the whole situation casually, but before anything ever began, I told her not to expect anything serious from me because I was not the relationship type. Due to bad experiences in the past, yes, infidelity. But we kept seeing each other and she kept pushing and pushing for commitment. I really started to like her personality, silly me, and after three months of fooling around, I decided to give the relationship a try. She was from a different town, about an hour and a half away, but she would spend every weekend, holiday, vacation with me at my place. When we met, I was a CEO, project leader of a company me and some other fellas tried to build from the ground up, but the owner, boss, unfortunately wasn't able to secure enough funds for us to continue working on it, despite the fact that we were two, three months away from putting the product on the market. I'm from an area, a country in Europe, where jobs are really hard to come by. But nevertheless, I applied for everything I was qualified for. I didn't care. I just needed a job. I got quite a few interviews, but no luck actually securing a job. This went on for six months. Of course, the fact that I didn't have a job made us both a bit uneasy, but I really didn't get a feeling that it was affecting a relationship at all. At the beginning of this year, January, I had a meeting with my counselor at the Unemployment Bureau. She asked me if I wanted to attend some courses where they'd teach me to code. Without hesitation, I said yes. Not only would I be able to get a job, I wouldn't need to worry about employment for the rest of my life. I applied. A few days later, I found out that they accepted me. I don't know what their criteria was, but I knew that they didn't want to just take anyone. But I was ecstatic. But something was off. A few days prior, I started to notice her being kind of weird, cold, unattentive. I knew something was amiss. She was starting fights over nothing. I couldn't make sense of it at the time. In one of the arguments we had, I said, look, everything is going to be fine now. I'll learn to code, and after a few months, we will be set for life. And she responded with something along the lines of, Who cares? You're going to fail miserably anyways. Who? That was weird, I said to myself. But I tried to officer her being in one of her bad mood swings. Didn't think much about it at the time. And you may have figured out by now, there was someone else in the picture. A week later, she dumped me for her co-worker. High school dropout, working a manufacturing job. I was beyond shook. I was sitting in my pain for the next three months, but it was high time for me to stop feeling sorry of myself. As I had started with my classes, COVID postponed the whole thing a bit, and I had a lot of work to do, since I've never even seen code before in my life. Now mind you, these courses were Microsoft courses, and the exams were studying for Microsoft exams, for which they only gave us three months of time, counting down from the last lecture of each course, so I had my work cut out for me. These kind of exams are usually taken by people who have a degree in computer science or at least employed programmers for the last few years. One day, I got home from my classes, opened my laptop, reading the book, doing some exercises until like 1 a.m. I was drained, and the more I was looking into it, the less I understood, but at least I got started. I went to bed, tossing and turning, and thought to myself, what the hell did I get myself into? I will never pass this stuff. Then, out of nowhere, I heard those words in the back of my head while she was cheating on me with the other guy. Who cares? You're going to fail miserably anyways. I let up like a Christmas tree, got back up, and continued to code until 4 a.m. Well, every time I was exhausted and about to lose it from all the new information, I remembered those words, and it was more than enough to keep me going. Today, my fellow betrayed, I passed the first Microsoft program exam, and I was already studying for the second one for the last two months, a totally different program melee, which, which I plan to also take and pass as well. Like the title says, sometimes the much-needed motivation comes from a strange place. I just wanted to share this with people who can relate in some way to this story, as I haven't told anyone else yet. Update. It's been a little over a year since my first and last open topic on this subreddit. At this opportunity, I would like to thank every single one of you for your support and your encouraging words. At the end of each year, I like to take some time for myself and look back on the year. Therefore, I decided to read another post to this community, since that has been so helpful and encouraging to me in the past, and hopefully to inspire even one person going through the same turmoil and hurt I went through almost two years ago. So what happens is my last post? I got my first software developer gig at the very beginning of the year. The very first company I sent my CV to decided to hire me not long after my original post. I started working in the beginning of January this year. My initial contract was only for six months. Understandably, the company wanted to make sure that they didn't take on board a cat in the bag, and I was eager to stop my career, so I took the job. But 
They allow me to work from home, although the offices are only a three-minute drive from my place. I decided to make sure that I take full advantage of the opportunity and to display to the whole world who I am and what I am capable of. After about three months on the job, I was having a skip called the lead tech of the software we were developing. He was not a member of the company, but was a private contractor. This guy was one of the most respected developers in the whole country and has been working for himself for the past decade. Towards the end of our conversation, he said, Hey, do you work on any project for yourself? I responded with, what do you mean? He said, well, I get a lot of clients and they're looking for software developers. You got some real talent, so let me know if you're interested. I can recommend you to them. I said, well, not right now. I have a non-compete clause in my contract, but that contract will expire in the summer and I can hopefully renegotiate with my company to take the clause out. He replied, do that and then notify me. Thus, at the end of the six months, the CEO of the company called me. He said that they are ecstatic with my work ethic and my potential, and they would like to extend my contract. I said, sure, I'm interested. I mentioned that I wanted my non-compete clause out of my next contract, and he responded with, well, we'll have to check up with the owner first on that. He then proceeded to tell me the salary they were prepared to offer me in our new deal. I immediately knew I worth more than that. In my mind, I was like, you are absolutely insane if you think I will sign that. But I responded by saying, I'll get back to you. I could hear it his voice that he was taken aback a bit by my response, but said, okay, notify me when you think about it. I gave him a call a few days later, a day before my contract officially expired. We talked for a bit, and he said that the owner does not like the idea of my opening my own software developing business, and they were scared that would affect my focus at work in their company. I said that I understood, but I know I wasn't backing down from that, as independent software developers are making a killing out here. Later that day, I responded to him with an email where I say to what kind of salary I want and that I want the non-compete clause out of the contract and those terms were not negotiable. The next day, the day my contract official expired, I got a call from the owner. Inside 15 minutes, he agreed to all my terms. All I had to do was sign with them for an indefinite term. At the very end of the conversation, the owner said, oh, and one more thing, you are not a software developer anymore. You are head of the IT development. I responded with, damn it, I should have asked for higher salary. We both laughed, happy that we reached an agreement. I accepted the offer and started contacting the companies the lead tech connected me with. Long story short, I finished this year with not only getting a job, but becoming the head of the department of that company that hired me. And after my job, I'm working for clients in the afternoon eating that are working on projects for the state. Yes, you read all of that correctly. People admire me and respect me. And needless to say, money is the least of my worries nowadays. My monkey branching acts? As far as I know, she is still the loser she jumped me for, struggling to make ends meet every month. If she had any concept of loyalty, she could have been in a retired stay-at-home wife and mom by now, which she stated multiple times that it was her wish. I guess she would rather struggle for the rest of her life than to support her man and wait another year, mere and a half. Oh well, say lovey. Merry Christmas to every single one of you. If there is anything I want you to take from my update, is that you should take that pain and hurt and turn it into a fire in your belly that will propel you to new heights and enable you a life you never even dreamed of. I know what is still pushing me to be even better and achieve even more every single day. Our first reaction comes from Tell More Lies. Excellent update. You are living your best life. Good for you. Just one comment. She could have been a retired state home mom wife by now, which she stated multiple times that it was her wish. I have taken the stance that any future relationships, both partners must contribute equally with child care, home care, and financially. This means that both partners work and contribute based on their salary. No stay-at-home dad and no stay-at-home mom. Good luck in your future. Traveler 8 chimes in next. Ah, uh, I needed this. What a great beginning to your story. I say beginning because I am sure this is the start of a very happy life, where you are to respect it and draw to you people who have positive energy and better outlook on relationships. I am so proud of the balls you had to do all the things you needed to get there. It took courage, confidence, and the willingness to say no to things and people who did not value you. Congratulations, man. This was a fantastic read. Zooming Brain chimes in too. Good for you. Way to go on the great path forward. Keep it up and happy holidays. On to the next story. Christmas as a single for first time in many years. Early this year, I found out my wife had affairs, not even long lusting, just hookups with random guys on Tinder. Breakup was messy. I told her she needs to leave. She refused. I insisted. Was very vulgar, but never physically with her. She called the cops. I got arrested. I had to go to court for harassment, verbal taunt, and currently going through personal therapy. I was in a very depressed state. 
Even though I feel very lonely, I'm also a lot happier and glad to leave 2021 behind. Although I'm expecting a very nasty divorce, she swears she will take everything from me. I'm very much looking forward to starting the first year of my life as a new, happier me. KTM429 responds first. I have a friend. His wife cheated on him. He had pictures of them and gave them to her parents to prove that she was cheating. She got mad and called the cops at 1am claiming he hit her. He went to jail. Got out a week later. Got fired for no show or calling. When he got home, she went out of town for four days. He sold everything in the house including her jewelry. Everything that was bought while they were married. She came home to an empty house. He took every dollar out of the bank and spent it on things he needed and hidden it. When she came back home, there was a card table, one lawn chair, a twin air mattress, and a small TD. All in divorce court, her lawyer asked what happened to the money that he stole. He said that he had a gambling problem and spent it. She had just built their house before they got married. In the end, all she got was about half of their clothes, and because she had him arrested and lost his job, she had to pay him alimony. Mrs. Jingles 0729 times in next. She's going to take everything from you. I don't know. Sounds like a verbal taunt to me. Better call the cops. And lastly, from Throwaway Bear 61. It'll hurt for a while, my friend. But as you are seeing in the future, you'll be much happier without this horrible, nasty, filthy thing in your life. It literally gets a little better each day. Get yourself a good lawyer, and you may be surprised how little shit gets off of you if your lawyer plays it right. Lawyers are not in the place to try to save money. Get the best you can. Seriously, try to enjoy what you can about your first holiday season free of that trash. Stay strong.